John Dillon here. We're here at the uh, offices of H&M Security uh, in London, uh, and we're with Frank McClintock, the double-winning captain of Arsenal and director of the company. Um, and we're going to chew the fat a bit about the old days. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to learn from you. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking beforehand there, Frank, actually, about when you first went to Arsenal. Um, yeah. And from Leicester City. And you felt a bit bewildered. You were the record signing at the time, weren't you? That's right. Um, 80,000 pounds. Yeah, Billy Wright was the manager. That's right. Uh, and at first, things didn't go to plan, did they? Well, first two and a half years or so. So it was a long time. I'd left Leicester City, who went for the double in 1961 and 63. Gordon Banks, of course, was the main man. He was a goalkeeper at the time. But we had an outstanding side as well. And I went to Arsenal expecting the great things. And uh, I was very disappointed actually. Billy Wright was a manager. Looking back on it, I feel sorry myself and other people criticised him. But it was his first job, and it was a massive job for a man who, who was famous for being an England captain, 106 caps. He must have felt the pressure terribly. So the team was in upheaval all the time. He'd win 4 nothing one week and get beat 3 2 the next. And that kept on going season after season. And it was only when they eventually let Billy Wright go and uh, Bertie Mee took over, which was a massive surprise to us because he was a physiotherapist. We'd never seen him coaching in his life. And uh, we were bitterly disappointed. We thought it was going to be someone like Don Revy or Alf Ramsey or somebody like that. And it wasn't. But uh, he was intelligent enough to go out and get Dave Sexton from Leighton Orient, who was a coach or manager at Leighton Orient. We'd never heard of him. We were bitterly disappointed, but after about a week or so of working with him, we were delighted with him. We thought, at last we've got somebody who knows the game inside out and can put it over to us. And from then on, we started getting better and better. Well, that was a big, bold step for the club to take. Absolutely. To appoint the physio. You know, maybe back in the 20s or 30s, you know, yeah. sort of the, uh, the club secretary picked the team or something like that. But... Uh, there was an echo of that in a way in later years. It was a, a similarly bold step when Arsenal appointed Arsene Wenger. Um, yeah. Because outside of the game, from Japan, he those of us in the game knew of him. He, you know, he'd been yeah. in France and he'd, he'd taken a team to a European final there. Yeah. But to the general public, again, it was well, a famous headline in the Evening Standard. Arsene yeah. who? You know? yeah. So I guess that was an echo of that. But you know, going back to that... Um, period, that first period at Arsenal, you'd also been through enough disappointments at Leicester, you know, I think you came close close to winning the double twice and twice. ended up with nothing, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we did, you know, each yeah. time. We only had about a squad of about 12 or 13 mm. players looking back on it, and they weren't, it was not a club that could go out and buy players for 20, 30 thousand pound in those days, you know, you just had to go on with what you had, but we finished up with a very good side, played very good football, but instead of maybe either winning one or the other, it was just a bit too much for us, you know, and we failed against Tottenham, down to 10 men. I mean, in those days, you couldn't get a substitute, so a right back get injured after about 15 minutes. And what they used to do in those days, you may remember, they used to, you know, bandage them up, put them at outside right, and got on with it. But um, they gradually wore us down, and Tottenham were a great side at the time as well, and finished up scoring two goals in the last 10 minutes. So that was a major disappointment, but we played exceptionally well that day. Two years later, we played against Manchester United, and Man United were about seventh bottom of the league, including Dennis Law and Quixel and all the stars there. And we were second top or third top of the league, so we were massive favourites to beat them. Turned out, Dennis Law, Paddy Crand and all the rest of them played out their skin and beat us 3-1. Another echo, funnily enough, later on in 2016, Leicester amazingly finally did it, yeah. you know, which must have... Uh, yeah. Giving you a little smile inside, I would have thought. You know, yeah, I was up in that game. Club, yeah. They invited yeah. me up there, my wife and I, and uh, it was great to, to see them. I still thought a hell of a lot of Leicester. They were a, they were a smashing club and it was a good board of directors as well, you know. So, still get many good thoughts about them. Yeah, I wish I'd have money on it. I can't see it happening again for another 30 no, years. No, no, no. One out of no. Oh. At Arsenal, after Bertie Mee took charge, things gradually improved. And, and the first success came in Europe, didn't it? You won the league, no, you lost two League Cup finals, didn't you? Yeah, we yeah. did, yeah. So again, so that was four Wembley finals you'd lost. Yeah, yeah. But then finally, success came, and it was a very dramatic night, wasn't it? Beating Andlet in the, uh, oh, the Old Fairs Cup final. Lost the first leg 3-1 yeah, in Belgium. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, I thought they were they were a very good side. I remember playing against them. It just shows you how different styles each country has got. We went there expecting them to, you know, get the ball out wide, get crosses in, smashing you across the face, crowd behind them. Well, for 20 minutes, all they did was knock the ball about, and we were saying to each other, "This is a doddle, this is, you know, we won't have any problem here." Then, bang, one nothing down, 22 yards out, shot in the bottom corner. Then we carried on again, thinking it was very similar. 15 minutes later or so, ping, another goal. Finished up, 3 nothing at half time. And they'd never pressurised us like you would get with the British team. And it was very strange to us. And then the second half, um, we brought on Ray Kennedy. And uh, right away he made an impact. And we found that they had a centre half there at the time. We, when we crossed the ball in, that Ray Kennedy and John Rutter started winning a lot of balls in the air. We got back to 3-1, but it still looked cast iron set that this was an outstanding side. And it went back to Highbury. And uh, I remember coming out of the dressing room and the players were all down in the dumps. I says, listen, we'll beat this team. I guarantee you, we'll beat this team. We squeeze up at the back, we get the ball out wide to our two wingers, and we get the ball in the box as much as we can, because that centre half can't head the ball for toffee. And that's exactly what happened. We won three nothing, and it was a glorious day. Even though we won the double, it was such an important day from our point of view because it was 17 years since Arsenal had won anything at all. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't there for the whole 17, but you felt the weight of the crowd and the expectancy of the of the fans, and we couldn't deliver up until that point. Well, it is particularly.